Good morning, and welcome to another edition of our online children's moment. My name is Piers Fetters, and I head up the family ministries here at the Chicago Temple. And it's so good to have you with me this morning. Now, over the past few weeks since Easter, we've been talking about different stories from the Acts of the Apostles that describe what they did after Jesus came back from the dead and then ascended into heaven. For today's story, we're in Acts chapter 8. Now, Jesus' final words to the disciples were, Be my witnesses. Tell about me in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When they did this in Jerusalem, like the story we heard last week where Peter healed the man at the temple gate who could not walk, they sometimes got into trouble with the Jewish leaders and with the government because they were seen to be disrupting the peace. So many people left Jerusalem for other places and took the story of Jesus with him. So in a sense, we could say they were planting the seeds of Jesus's good news around the globe. When so many people became believers in Jesus, the apostles couldn't do all the work. So they appointed seven men to help them. One of these men was a man named Philip, who became known as Philip the Evangelizer which means that he told people about the good news of Jesus Christ. So today's story is about Philip. It begins when Philip was preaching in a city called, uh, in a city in Samaria. And he was doing just fine there when an angel of God said to him, go to the road that leaves Jerusalem. Now this was a road through the desert wilderness and was a pretty dangerous road, especially if you were traveling by yourself. The angel, though, gave him more instructions and said, leave at noon. And guess what? That's the hottest time of day. So imagine you're traveling on a desert road at the hottest time of day. But Philip obeyed what the angel had commanded and started down the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. And it was hot. On this road from Jerusalem to Gaza was a man from Ethiopia. He had come to Jerusalem to worship God, but was now on his way home. And he was the treasurer of all the money that belonged to the queen of Ethiopia. So this man had an important job. And so this explains why he was riding in a chariot, not walking like many of the travelers on that road. As he sat in his chariot, riding along, the man was reading a scroll from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Now, Philip could see the man in the chariot and then heard a voice from heaven. The Holy Spirit said to him, go to the chariot and keep up with it. So Philip started walking alongside this chariot and he listened and recognized that the man was reading from the book of Isaiah. So Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? The man replied, it's confusing. How can I figure this out without someone to help me? If you can help me, get in the chariot and help explain to me these scriptures. So Philip got into the chariot and they started off. And Philip began to explain to the man about Isaiah and then said, Isaiah was prophesying about someone who would come, and that person has come, and his name is Jesus. So before long, they were passing by some water. Look at the water, said the man. Is there any reason why I can't be baptized here? So clearly, Philip also mentioned and talked about baptism. So they stopped, and Philip and the man from Ethiopia got out of the chariot and walked on the water. Philip baptized the man, and then the Holy Spirit took Philip to Azotus, where he continued to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now, can you only imagine, as that man from Ethiopia returned home, he probably too shared all that happened and all that he learned. So in Philip telling one person, that person was able to go to a new place in Ethiopia and share the good news of Jesus. And that's what we're still commanded to do. We can still look for opportunities to tell people about what Jesus has done. 
through how we interact with them, through how we show our love to them, and through what we say and how we can tell them about Jesus Christ. We can think of it again like planting a seed. It sometimes takes a while for a seed to grow, but we don't know how the conversations we might have or the things we might do might influence people so that they'll also recognize who Jesus is and dedicate their lives to following him. So that's my hope for us all, and that's why we're going to sing the song, which is one of my favorites, the Seed Song, which is about planting those little seeds so that others can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So would you sing with me? Find a little seed, find a little seed, plant it in the ground, plant it in the ground, wait for it to grow, wait for it to grow, don't disturb it, don't expect to see, don't expect to see, changes overnight, changes overnight, if you wait a while, if you wait a while, you'll find new life. Sunshine will come, raindrops will fall, your little seed will grow again. Soon there will be a day in the spring when your seed blossoms and grows. Find the seed of love, find the seed of love, plant it where you can. Wait for it to grow, wait for it to grow. Don't disturb it, don't expect to see, don't expect to see. Changes overnight, changes overnight. If you wait a while, if you wait a while, you'll find new life. Sunshine will come, raindrops will fall, your little seed will grow again. Soon there will be a day in spring when your seed blossoms and grows. Sunshine will come, raindrops will fall, your little seed will grow again. Soon there will be a day in spring when your seed blossoms and grows. Thank you for joining me for another installment of our online children's moment. I hope you have a wonderful week. And before we go, let me pray for us. God of all people, just as many people have been your witness through the years, guide us to be your witnesses today so that we might plant the seeds of your truth and love in this world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful week. And I'll see you next time. Bye.